So first up uh, is uh, Andrew Negri. Um, you know him, we love him, come on up. <laughs> uh, obviously he's a NOAA employee from ASPB. Um, he's done a lot of work uh, in cloud. Um, and that's all I'm going to say. And I'm going to give you this. And when I start waving at you, that's been about 15 minutes. Okay, uh, thank you very much for that uh, introduction, Steve. Um, yeah, so I, everyone works on Evictors, almost everybody in our building. So I'm just here to uh, represent, you know, as Steve pointed out, the capabilities, limitations of Evictor science. Um, I, I will focus given my negative nature on limitations, but during the, uh, during the panel discussion, you know, there's a lot of research going on in the building trying to overcome those limitations. Uh, you know, bring those up. I will, I will present more of an overview, not specifically what, what exactly we're dealing with, but an overview of the imager, which I think the other groups, the sounder and the, the active guys, will just continually attack and come for the imager, as they say. Um, so anyway, I, I took a very literal uh, direction from Steve, so I'll, I'll just go through the, he gave us initially a table to fill out of how well our sensors do in, in areas. So I'm, I'm just going to go in and highlight, so just call it vertical distribution, uh, liquid water path, ice water path. You know, what What can the imager provide? And you can contrast that to what the other, what the other more advanced active sensors are doing and where we can go to uh, synergistically use these. Um, that's again, uh, and, and I'll end with what I think uh, some of the let me go ahead and march through this. Um, so what, again, everyone works on an imager, so I won't, I won't really define what an imager is. But, um, you know, clouds are obvious features in imagers. That's why imagers were made in, in the 60s and 70s. Um, you know, they, they started with, with just a, a couple channels to, to, to about five or so with the imager are. This is 1970s technology. The imagers have undergone a gradual Know, expansion of the capabilities. Almost all imagers have a 0.65 or visible reflectance, 11 micron uh, brightness temperature, and then some channel in the near IR, say 1.6 or the sphere. And I argue with three of those channels, you can do 80% of the cloud remote sensing one does uh, with imagers. But new imagers have H2O and CO2 channels that kind of merge into sounders. And the short wave uh, new imagers are having things like polarization. Um, so again, I make the point: the imagers are really two sensors, solar reflectance and uh, thermal infrared, and the two behave very, very differently um, for cloud, cloud remote sensing. You will hear them okay. It's not yeah. really using the mic. So. Uh, oh, should I, should I use it? Yeah. yeah. Here we have um, we have an inversion issue. 
So the, uh, we didn't treat inversions well, but this is also another, you don't have independent cloud hide information. You're, you're very sensitive to the inversions and how you treat them. So this is uh, purely due to the inversions. If you notice, there are some points on the tropal, they're getting a tropal pause solution in the, in the beers resolved. That again is a case where sometimes the retrieval fails. If you don't have certain channels, you have no idea where the cloud is, and you'll, you'll shoot up the trouble. So I think all these issues um, are not the same in all imager retrievals, but all I think four of these issues are, are, are constantly being battled by imager remote sensing. Um, that's two, again, I mean, imagers, it's, it's a loose term because they, they've changed so much over the years. They're not all the same. Can do a theoretical kind of calculation that we did in the paper a few years ago, where the y-axis is how much slop there is in the cloud height retrieval to give you, where you still match the observations you use to get the retrieval. So the blue line is veers. So veers, uh, the x-axis is uh, emissivity from one on the right, which is opaque to zero, which is transparent. You can see that the veers result has a big uncertainty because it's window channels. If you bring in a CO2 channel, a MODIS or an EVI like retrieval in red, you can see that our errors, the, the, the space that we can get a solution really, really narrows down quite a bit. So they, again, this is one of those issues where uh, you know the images are getting better and better over the years, and there's a lot of work I'm sure that will come up in the discussion about pulling in the CO2 and H2O channels from the sounders into the imager for a synergistic. Uh, way forward. And uh, I just bring in some data from Ed Alaranta here. He's here. But uh, here's it goes. You can ask the question, well, how well, how well do we really do uh, instead of those theoretical calculations? This is a GOES 13 result, which has water vapor and CO2, so I think a better retrieval than beers for cloud height. You can see Ed's LIDAR optical depth um, for the x-axis from Norman, Oklahoma, I think from uh, a couple months in 2002. You can see our height errors on the y-axis, and we do pretty well uh, for optical depth compared to the point five. So that's, that's kind of what I would say would be our limit of success based on, uh, based on our analysis. Um, I'm not going to talk about optical depth particle size, because I think those are a little um, esoteric, maybe. So I'm going to jump into liquid water path, ice water path, because I know the microwave guys following me will uh, talk about. So um, imagers do, of course, derive these properties. Um, we've done this for many years. I kind of wanted to show just how an imager compares to, uh, to a microwave uh, current product. So, a couple points I want to make. Um, again, I've shown these are the, kind of the two old-time Nesdis products. Clever X is the, is the Nesdis Imager Imager R product on the top, and the Mirrors Microwave EMSU is on the bottom. And both of these products exist like on beers and on other sensors. You can you tell a couple things about how the Imager liquid water path and the microwave liquid water path compare. First, you can see um, this is, a, uh, this is a daytime only product for the imager, so it's getting late in the year. We don't have sunlight in the northern hemisphere. Also, you can see a lot of gaps of gray missing. Uh, we don't see it through ice clouds in an imager. We can't really profile water paths or water contents. At the bottom, you see, of course, the microwave mirrors. It doesn't work over land. Over the ocean, it gives a very continuous feel, but you know it misses a lot of, a lot of thin clouds. So, um, I know these channels on EMC are different than they were on EMC or E or SSMI, but I think the basic, basic story is the same. The imager does a really good job at the small, characterizing the thin, small clouds that are ubiquitous over the ocean. And I did point out Tom Greenwald's 87 paper who uh, showed that where they both do can see the data at the same time, they agree very, very well. Is there an ice issue? Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. Um, we can't see it through ice. So where there's ice, where there's water under ice, we can't see it. No, I guess ice, like sea ice. Sea ice. 
Yeah, that's another, that's another limitation. Our, uh, at this, whether C is the optical depth is retrieval uh, becomes very difficult. So we, we're only as good as our knowledge of the surface is. So when things get bright, Eight of 
Windows or Imagers, and there's a couple white R's. You can see they all pretty much clump together. So there's really no, no obvious spectral physical reason how close it is. It's always amazing to me how, uh, how we all got the same number, given all the differences in spatial spectral information going. I really made, I think detection is so fully based on the algorithm choices, the people that write the, uh, the techniques and Danny, the Danny, Yes? Can you go back to the slide? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get what the meaning of the letters were. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, cloud amount is the one I want you to look at. It's on the one on the far column. But each of those is, is high cloud amount, middle cloud amount, low cloud amount. So again, the story is pretty much, they all, they all tend to group, but there's no obvious pattern that sounders are always higher, where images are always, always lower. That's, that's all I can say about detection. Maybe that will come up. In so, a summary. Um, again, I didn't talk about, and I hope this helps comes up in the discussion, you know, our charge was, as I interpreted, to look purely at the pixel level results and physics of the retrievals. There's a lot of work going on in, in SIMS. Uh, spatial and temporal analysis of cloud objects and features, such as the convection, the tropical overshooting tops, and, and, and other things. So I hope that comes up in the discussion. We're not imagers have much more to bring to them than the simple spectral information from the pixel level. So that's where the cutting edge research is, but it's a little hard to uh, to discern.
Yeah, it's 